So, hi Mike. Hi. It's Tuesday about 3.30. It's, uh, what is it, the 27th of August. We're down at the Ugly Fed at 101 Market. 101 Market. There's a sign over there that says F the Fed. <laughs> okay, and so, uh, Mike, you want to explain what goes on down here every Tuesday at 3 and then what's going on specifically around this particular chalking event? Well, what we've been doing down here, uh, we started like uh, three and a half months ago. Three of us just wanted to get people coming back together to show that Occupy was in fact making a difference still. Uh, every Tuesday, the numbers grew. We started putting messages down and people were paying t attention to what we're writing and people are stopping taking pictures and we're doing a lot of outreach with basically everybody who walks by. Um, it's turned into uh, the average 20, 25 people coming through on a Tuesday now. We, During, I mean, um, how, what did you start with? It turned into 23 starting from It started what? with uh, me, Sarah, and Belle. And, Belle uh, Star. Yeah, Belle Star, she was here the first day and then she, she hasn't really come back but a couple times since then. But the, the day that me and Sarah started it, um, people just came through. Our group is out here on the streets every day and they they come through, they start talking to other groups and it just people started coming together. And, and so what well, what's what was the point of doing this? Something to do. And something to annoy the Fed. They think <laughs> that they beat us and they did. We we left last year. We could have stayed here. We could have held it out another year, but without replacement sleeping bags what the cops were stealing, it just wasn't worth us all getting sick again. So getting sick? Oh yeah, yeah. What do you they, mean sick? Last year everybody who was occupying out here was sick the whole time. Uh, we thought it was the spray that DPW was using, but it could have been just exposure. The police yeah. were taking our sleeping bags and blankets and using them as evidence of lodging and keeping them. So they'd release us and we'd be back out here without anything to keep us warm. You guys are amazing. You're the front line of this whole thing and you, you do amazing things. I have such respect and admiration for you. I mean, you have stuck it out. So, now again, this chalking is is for the purpose, there are several different purposes oh, yeah. going on. Do you want to... The biggest thing I think is it's just bringing people together. That is the thing where the ideas come from. We talk out here and from the talking came the approach to Action Council about, hey, let's do something bigger. And then the convergence came out of that and now the convergence is a week away. There is a lot of talk, mostly among this group who occupied out here, to go and occupy on the second and take it, hold it through the boat race. Now, whether we can do that or not is up to the whole group of people. Okay, so what's going to happen for people who know nothing about this? What this is uh, that's Labor Day when this yep. convergence is happening. Start with the baby steps and explain what that is. You had the idea sitting out here for this convergence. What's the convergence? The convergence is just everybody getting back together. Everybody meaning. Uh, all of Occupy, every other uh, group out there, protest group that wants to come, the labor unions who want to come. If we can get a large enough group of people together and, and start reorganizing, because we are not organized right now, we are scattered. If we can reorganize, then we can become a force in this city. And this is a city that's watched around the world. If we can make a difference here, then other groups can follow our lead. That's what's so important. we got two cities, New York San Francisco. And San Francisco really hasn't done that much this year. Last year, we had the longest run in occupation in front of a Fed. This year, we've had a couple of actions that everybody knew about, but a lot of small autonomous actions that nobody knew about. And what were the two actions that everybody knew about? Uh, we knew about uh, Kazar and we knew about uh, Gezi Gardens. Those were the two that we put a lot of information out about because those were the two that the most people were going to. But the smaller actions, like we had the uh, the march last year, I think you went to the uh, uh, the, the people who were burning themselves, I can't remember the word, but uh, we marched from... Uh, self-immolation? Yes, the self-immolation Now who's we doing that? Well, we, it, we did it last year. We had 15 people and that was it and nobody knew what happened. Wait a minute, the people were them. here burning themselves? No, no, we had a march from the Gandhi statue up to Civic Center, but the information didn't get out. Who were the people burning themselves? They were well, no, we weren't, they weren't burning themselves. It was about the uh, Buddhist monks who were doing it. It was the people from the 60s who were doing it, including the Tunisian gentleman who did it, and we just, we honored them in a silent march from Gandhi all the way up. Okay, so nobody was immediately at that time burning themselves? Oh, no, or, no, no, no. Okay, no. It, it was just, just in It was honor just to bring attention, of... yes, it was to bring attention to what was going on over there. Excellent. But that was one of the marches that nobody really knew about. The other one was the Postal March. We couldn't get the information out online fast enough for people to 
to go, and we had a month's notice. Postal so, march? What, what was that about? Uh, that's when we marched. We occupied the post office, I believe, over on Van Ness, and we basically held it for about an hour inside chanting. Uh, uh, Peter Mancini was there filming. I was there filming. Uh, Rob was there filming. And uh, uh, it, what it was was uh, Angela from the Postal Union uh, came here, and we helped organize the march with them and did the march with them. About 30 of the encampment members went up, and they had about 50. So, and then the other groups of Occupy came together. So basically, Occupy doubled the numbers the Postal Union had. Okay, for for people who don't know, what's the issue with the post office? They are taking the post office buildings and they are selling them. They're taking public buildings and selling them privately. Uh, and I do believe that uh, the last name of the person doing it is Blum, who is uh, in some way related to a, a person Diane named Feinstein. Uh, and uh, of course, she for no profiting at all from this. Um, no. You know, well, there, there's just corruption out. Yeah, uh, everywhere, no, it's, everywhere. is this a cynical statement? She's not profiting at all, or is this true? Um, I have heard, I, I of course can't prove anything because I don't have access to an, uh, uh, an accurate uh, line of information. But yeah, everybody's talking about it. The people that I trust the information coming from are talking about it, so I will of course believe that there is some truth to this. Um, I still have a question over how they got rid of Gezi Gardens. From what I understand, that was public property also. The, or, yeah, the, the yeah. Hay Hayes Valley Farm Track. Yeah. That was supposed to be used for a freeway entrance ramp. It was public property. Then it was somehow sold to a private developer. I don't understand that. I understand now that they can use eminent domain to take your property and give it to a private developer to make money off of it. So I'm wondering if that had something to do with it. Plus, we got Agenda 21, which a lot of people don't believe it is really happening. What's but, Agenda 21 uh, now? That's the UN agenda. And uh, that uh, it's to protect the resources and to consolidate people into cities. These, I'm not, I'm not going to say exactly what it is because I don't have it in front of me. I think you can read it. But the end result is they want you in the population centers to better control you, and they want to take the property that's outside of it for privatization or for uh, basically the rich. It's a twist on eminent domain, yes. is it not? Yes, yes. And since the eminent domain laws have been changed, they were changed a few years ago to where now a private individual can take your property or a city can take your property, not for uh, improvement, but for profit. That's something that's going on all over the place. Uh, the Roy Kaler situation down in Santa Cruz that we participated in, they uh, use zoning laws to try to steal this property under Agenda 21. And that's how they do it, is they take a, a, a zoning regulation, the city will take a zoning regulation and uh, force you either to uh, uh, abide by the zoning laws or you lose your property or you get fined and end up going broke. And people lose their property all over the country. I this. would advise people to look up Agenda 21. Yes. It is real. Yes. It is not oh, some yeah. oh, hooey, yeah. hooey uh, uh, thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a real thing. Yes. And it's very complex the way it works. There is, Agenda, yeah, 21. Agenda 21. Agenda 21. I need to get online to actually. There's so much involved I in this. Too. I would have to read this stuff to the people. But I'm hoping that uh, on the convergence, we're going to try to do information tables on the things, the, the key things that people are not aware of. Fukushima is a big one.